properly trained. Guess I pass. I am very properly trained.
We're back? Did that really just happen? It felt like a dream. Or maybe a bad movie. Another episode of Brian's Movie Den with me, the ever lovable Brian Hinnerman. Today I want to talk about a new film I found at Movie Night. That's night with a K, the Mecca for VHS aficionados in the greater Dallas area. Yeehaw! The movie is called Delivery Disaster. Uh -oh. We open in media res. A mailman drives a truck full of packages down in uh, an endless American neighborhood as a pack of rabid dogs chase behind. Now, these dogs are nothing like my mom's, my stepmom's Corgi Chuck. These were some real nightmare hellhounds. The dogs keep pace with the mail truck, tearing chunks out of the driver's legs and arms. Each package he throws out the door is marked by his bloody handprint. He screams in pain and confusion, and this goes on and on until the movie just abruptly ends. There aren't even any credits, which is a pretty bold choice. Is this film a commentary on how our 9 to 5 jobs are killing us, or how hostile the modern world is to outdated concepts like mailmen? Perhaps it's merely a statement about the futility of purpose and how no task can ever be really done. There are lots of ways to interpret it, but for now, let's get to the part you're all waiting for. It's score time! Score. I give this film a 4 out of 5, only because the actor frequently broke the fourth wall by looking into the camera and shouting at it, like he was shouting at the audience. A little too on the nose for me, but I did enjoy it, and I recommend you check out other films produced by Blessed Pictures. Bike Hard and Coffee Bullet are the only others I've found, but this little art house studio certainly knows how to push the boundaries of Western cinema. And a friendly reminder that there will be no new episode next week, as I will be visiting my aunt in Delaware for Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening, all you Brian fans, and remember, we all love movie magic, but don't forget about the you magic. Until next time, Movie Den. Brian's Movie Den. Movie Den. Brian. 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 Movie Den.
The Foundation is overrun. I was out of time and out of options. I took all the C4 I could get my hands on and strapped it to the nail. Boom. A desperate move. But it's better off in pieces than in enemy hands. Trench wouldn't be thrilled. He always said how vital the nail was. How it was the Bureau's duty to protect it. Bullshit. Those years spent in the director's chair warped his priorities. In the end, he valued order over people. The advice of invisible voices over that of old friends. He lost sight of who he was. The board made sure of that. But I did my duty. The hiss can't corrupt a pile of smoking rubble. My last act as head of operations. I'm done. At least I could take those bastards down with me. Boom. The nail. Pile of smoking rubble. Marshall blew up the nail. What the hell was she thinking? All right. This is the last one. I can't believe Marshall's brilliant plan was to blow up the nail. <laughs> and she thought I wasn't ready. Should be better now, not worse. Emily will know. I hope.
What did you do? What is causing these tremors? I thought you could tell me. I completed the four rituals just like the board told me to. The astral bleed should have stopped. Look, it has stopped. The nail is repaired. But we have a new problem. My analysis of the nail indicates that it is literally a piece of the astral plane. Or possibly a vessel containing the astral plane. Or both. Either way, right now both dimensions are vibrating at completely incompatible frequencies. The spatial friction they are generating is incalculable. It's going to destroy both planes. I messed this all up. Maybe Marshall was right to destroy the nail. I should have left it in pieces. No, then the astral plane would still be leaking in. Sometimes there's no right answer, Jesse. We need more information. No. I need to fix this now. I'll just... I'll figure something out. No, we should really make a plan. The tremors are originating from directly below us, but we don't know what... Perfect. I'll head down and take care of whatever's going on. Just do what you can from here. Jesse, you can't just... I have to, Emily. I'm the director. This is on me. Jesse, you're back. So did you find anything noteworthy? The original Bureau expedition down here left so much interesting stuff behind. Like their ID cards. I picked up a weird one. It's pretty old. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, I found a few ID cards myself. Or, more accurately, the Rangers found them for me. Are you starting a collection? I'm going for the whole set. I kid, of course. But I suppose they are sort of like baseball cards, except for bureau stuff from the 60s. Hey, the one you found is different than mine. It looks like it's a higher clearance level. A rare one, then. Want to keep it, Emily? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely do. But I think you should hang on to it for now. High clearance access might come in handy. Sounds like you have something in mind. Guilty. See, I've been going through Dr. Ash's notes, or the ones I can find, anyway. Like Darling, he seemed to enjoy hiding his most relevant research. From what I gather, there is another floor beneath the warehouse with a special lab that requires five high-level staff members just to access. Here, take this. It's an old skeleton key. Something else the Rangers found. I give them five bucks for every useful trinket they bring me. I'm going to assume this key is my ticket to that lower floor. And that super secret lab you mentioned. Bingo bango, as Dr. Darling used to say. Well, keep your eyes peeled for more ID cards around the warehouse. If Ash's notes are reliable, and I'm sure they are, then five is the magic number. If you're not going to listen to me, then you better go figure out how to stop this. There's no telling what could happen if the vibrations escalate. Any progress with the nail? Of course. I've been busy with surface analysis. Its composition is remarkably similar to that of material found in the astral plane, but it alters itself between my observations. It's almost as if it doesn't like being examined. So the nail is from the astral plane? Not necessarily. See, if we assume that, we're suddenly facing a lot of new questions. How did something so large get out of the astral plane? How did it get inside the oldest house? Did a threshold bring it in? Did people? Maybe through the motel. Maybe it was always here. Hmm. Doubtful. Have you spent any time looking into the crystals growing around here? As if I could resist. The biggest question is where it comes from. A threshold? Or is it native to the foundation? But if so, why doesn't it grow in the rest of the oldest house? The fact that they return to an earlier state when damaged is severely inconsistent with our reality's adherence to linear time. So either they're A, partially conscious, or B, organic elements that are foreign to and yet influenced by our dimension. The jury's still out. Have you learned anything about the crystals? I have a power that lets me stretch them. Huh. Yep. Any idea what Marshall would be doing down here? 
That information is on a need-to-know basis, Faden. <laughs> Sorry, I can resist. But honestly, I never had much interaction with Marshall. She only came to me when she was looking for Darling. But this is Helen Marshall we're talking about, the woman who single-handedly dealt with the Bergen Peak AWE. If she's down here, it's because she needs to be. Well, clearly she couldn't handle this one on her own. I'll see you later, Emily. Good luck. Take notes. I hope I know what I'm doing. That was just the top of the nail? How much deeper does the foundation go? Three day plus 118. I have changed. Though it's hard to know how or why. I no longer need tools to detect the house's veins, to hear it breathe. I can feel its blood churning beneath my bare feet. I have added my own illustrations to the walls, trying to solve some mystery that the oldest house whispers to me. I have to avoid the it as I do so. They haunt me. I don't blame them. They're just following the pillar's orders. Even poor Adam doesn't seem to recognize me anymore. I've spent a long time contemplating the etchings of the tree and its roots. Did you know this city used to be a forest? I wonder if our oldest house wore a different face back then. Or if it was always here. A 21st century office building since time immemorial. Can a place know the future? Can it change its skin? Can it wander? I always thought the esoteric world was my father's, not mine. But here, in this sacred place, I finally understand his devotion and his awe. I have changed. So it's hard to know how or why. The crystals are going crazy here. It's almost like they're trying to stop me. I tried to get out after the detonation, but the astral spike came out of nowhere. I escaped, but my HRA was damaged. I'd bet a year's salary the board sent it. We never did see eye to eye. They have too much control over Trench, the Bureau, the House. They make themselves part of every important process. Nothing a little C4 can't fix. Two birds, one bomb. Christ, what a mess. But I stopped the hiss. I did it. If Faden did her part, then the Bureau is safe. Until the next thing. Jesse has good reason to hate the Bureau. But that could be what we need right now. She won't follow the same path. Won't fall into the same traps. She'll lead her way. So, Director Faden... Here's my last lesson. You can save everybody. HRA was damaged. The board said it. When Marshall blew up the nail, the board attacked her. I don't fucking like it.
Director Faden here. Dispatch a ranger to this location. Make way for the director! Nobody else... Nobody else hears the house. Their ears are too full of lies. We were shown the way inside so we could help. But all we've done is fall victim to the same parasite. I should have seen the web earlier. The strands between Northmore, the pillar, the gun, the id. What hope did we have? Thrown into this conflict beyond our comprehension. I've decided to rejoin the Bureau in the upper levels. To end my long absence spent in the Foundation. Northmore will be angry at me for disobeying him. That's just his way. But I don't care. I need to remain in the oldest house to help however I can. I doubt I can steer the Bureau back on the right course, but I have to try. How did I go so long without a purpose? Without devotion? I can hardly remember how it felt. I realize how grateful I am to Father for setting me on this path. I wish I could tell him that. Here's the house. Marshal? You're... alive. Soon you will no longer recognize us, or yourself, or him, or her, or them. Family is dead. The walls are broken, but... Yellow and red in the eye. God damn it. Even it is made right. Either you fuckers take side. everything. I am not she letting you take this. You always been the new you. You want this to be true.
The nail is corrupted. That explains why the board wasn't answering what's causing the quakes. Marshall came down here to stop this. I should have been with her. I could have saved her. But I can still save everyone else. Sure to. Let's play it smart. They don't need to know I'm on to them. Not yet, anyway. Secure. The hiss can't touch it. I can't undo the astral bleeding in the foundation, but at least it stopped. Along with the seismic activity. You did it, Jesse. Did you ever find Marshall? I did. She's gone. She died thinking she'd save the Bureau. Not a bad way to go. I wasn't ready for this crisis. I didn't even see it coming. But I promise I'll be ready for the next one. I mean, what good is a director who can't hold her bureau together? thought I know how to handle things now that I'm the director clearly it's not that simple I need to choose a direction for the bureau it should be one that serves our goals not the boards whatever those are I need to lead my way Director. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there, reaching for her, trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Phaeton sensed a drowning man, a hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out.
darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle. Trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away. And made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. A man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. Anyone here? Guess not. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the Bureau. Working. Probably a loose power core somewhere.
care. Now that gate should open.